Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Oh, hold on a moment, Mother. There's someone at the door. Mrs. Peel put down the telephone and still holding the list containing the names of society ladies who used the perfume Reckless Abandon, walked to her front door. A large, bearded man stood in the doorway, a snub-nosed gun in his fist. The list. That's what I've come for. That list. Hand it over. What? Hand what? it over. Mrs. Peel did so. Her eyes on the man's finger as it tightened over the trigger. Ah, thank you. That's better. Now, step back into the room, and no funny tricks, mind. Slowly now. Back. Back. That's better. Now, you're going to help me destroy this list. Immediately. The Avengers. And Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many women say, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease mark. Yes. If you use cold water Omo, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. Pink Pussycat song. Episode 4 of this story, in which John Steed finds a romantic writer, Mrs. Peel flirts with death, and various other characters are determined to... Love all. When Sir Rodney Kellogg was murdered, the only positive clue near the body was a flimsy lace handkerchief. Mrs. Peel was inclined to gloat as she'd always maintained that Sir Robert had been seduced into giving away top secrets by a woman. Mrs. Peel had followed up on the clue of the handkerchief by tracing the perfume on it. Bell Chambers had given her a short list of all the clients in London who used the exclusive perfume Reckless Abandon. Mrs. Peel, not quite moving in the exalted society channels, had been on the phone to Mother when she was interrupted by the arrival of the man who now held her at gunpoint. The man's orders were clear enough. Mrs. Peel was in a tight spot, and she knew it. Back. Back. That's it. Now, without any more trouble, pick up that cigarette lighter on the table. You... Do as I say. Now, flick it open. Light it. That's it. Now, you will watch this list burn. Don't move. The man placed the paper into the flame. It burned rapidly. Mrs. Peel suddenly jerked the lighter forward. Yeah. The flame singed the man's hand. He yelped, dropped the list. Mrs. Peel chopped the gun from his hand. <coughs> they grappled what? with each other. Mrs. Peel trying to oh, stamp yeah. out the burning paper with her feet as they did so. <coughs> Mother on the phone was completely confused. What's going on? Look at what you're doing. Mrs. Peel was trying her best. She struggled free and made for the burning paper. The man went to the gun on the floor. And Mrs. Peel was forced to leave the charred paper and defend herself yet again. Quiet, Mrs. Peel. 
Mrs. Peel closed in, grasping the man's wrist that held the gun. The struggle was fierce. The man's greater strength was telling he was forcing the gun round towards her, nearer, nearer. With the last of her strength, Mrs. Peel dodged to one side, twisting the man's arm suddenly. The man gasped and slowly collapsed to the floor. Mrs. Peel rushed to the list to find it burned away into ashes. She turned back to the man and searched him, finding nothing but a curious ring upon his finger. Curious? A sort of entwined heart notice and an inscription. Casanova Inc. She moved to the phone. Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel. Are you there? Are you still living? Hello? Hello, Mother? Yes, just about. Sorry to keep you waiting. What do we know about Casanova Inc.? Any ideas? While Mother and Emma Peel were talking on the phone, the char lady, Martha, was also putting through a call. I'm phoning from the ministry. Good evening, Miss White. It's all right. The public phone in the corridor doesn't go through the switchboard. Everything's going splendidly. They're all studying the book. Every one of them is falling under the spell. Kate's got at the moment. He must be nearly finished. He's had it long enough. Then I shall be moving in. Just a minute. I've got to go, darling. Just look like trouble. Martha slammed down the phone and watched with growing concern as down the corridor tramped a large policewoman. She looked at all the names on the doors, paused outside Tate's, knocked, and walked in. Tate, without looking up from the book, said, Go in. The policewoman walked over to the desk. Tate looked up. His eyes gleamed. His fleshy mouth fell open in astonishment and delight. He appeared to hang on her every word, she said. Are you the owner of the car number UGF 711F? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes, I am. You're parked in a no-parking zone. I am? Yeah. Have you anything to say? Oh, yes. Yes, I... I love you. I but... love you. I love you! <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you there? Martha, what is it? Darling, it's all gone wrong. I can't explain on the phone. But the first person Kate saw after the treatment from the book wasn't me. It was a policewoman. Great It's a real spoken out wheel. I must see you. All right, come no, on. Not now. I'm coming straight over. But, Martha. No buts about it. I must see you now. When Steed arrived at Tate's office, he found Tate at his desk. Next to him. Handcuffed to him was the policewoman. Was it really necessary to handcuff him? I didn't do it. He handcuffed me. He said, those on the law are joined together. Let no man put a thunder. Oh, my dearest. You know, Steve, they need a dog's life, these adorable girls in blue. Really? Is that so? Hey, we shouldn't allow it. We should complain to the government. We are the government. Yes. Oh, so am I. Well, I shall complain to the prime minister. I'm sure he'll be devastated. How would you like it if you had to face dangerous criminals unarmed? Oh, not my cup of tea at all. Uh, tell me, Mr. Tate, have you always felt so strongly about law enforcement? No, no, no. Then why the sudden crusade? Someone came into my life. This uh, lady? That's right. Oh, my love. Number 729154, please, from Grimshaw. Oh, just my luck. My first traffic offense and I end up tied to Casanova. I should have stayed in a ring. In Mother's headquarters, he was dividing his attentions pretty equally between a gin and tonic and the ring Mrs. Peel had placed on the arm of his wheelchair. Very civilized for me, dear. The ring? The gin. Hmm. Casanova Inc. I didn't say it, although I consider myself an extraordinarily well-read and knowledgeable man. I've never heard of him. Didn't know him. Well, the man who wore this obviously knew about me. I've always thought you attracted the most strange assailants. A beggars can't be choosers, Mother. I have to take what I can get. Mm. Sir, they'll be very keen to destroy that list. Do you recall any of the names upon it? Mm -mm. Only the ones I read out to you. Mm, pity. Obviously, you hadn't reached the ones that mattered. Ah, Steed. Good. Just in time to pour me the other half. Mm. Sure, Mother. Tell me, was that incredible report about Tate accurate? I'm afraid so. He should have gone completely off the rails. Suddenly developed a passion for an Amazon in a blue uniform. Extraordinary. No, I don't try it, Stephen. 
Oh, thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, tell me, where is Tate now? In custody. Mm, he should be in an asylum. Yeah, the whole case is taking on a strange pattern. Don't like the picture. Neither do I. Any leads yet? And in this ring, Mr. Peel acquired. Not romantically, I hasten to add. Let me see. Hmm. Casanova Inc. Well, what's this got to do with it? It's about time you found out, Steve. What about little old me? You go back to the ministry, Mrs. Beale, and see if you can isolate the germ that's causing this epidemic. See if you can track down, for want of a better phrase, the love bug. <laughs> Mrs. Peel returned to the ministry and explored Tate's office. It was there that she came across the book marked Commission Report, Read, Digest, and Pass On. She opened it, glanced at it without interest, and then suddenly became alert. She sank down into the leather chair and began to concentrate. Steed had also done a little reading in a telephone book he'd found, Casanova, Inc. It was in an office block in the East End. Steed found it with difficulty. The reception room was filled with books. Every wall. Steve walked round reading the titles. The complete works of Rosemary Red Blade. With that, Steve knocked on the door, which carried the sign Casanova Inc. Rosemary Red Blade, director, and opened it. A woman's voice was reading. Aha, my dear, he cried. For your husband is the notorious highwayman, Black Jack McGinty. He shall remember this night as long as he lives, which won't be long. With that, he began to advance upon her. His eyes narrowed evilly, and his breast heaved with lascivious passion. Steed entered the room. She shrank back against the wall, her eyes filled with tears. Defile me if you must, you villain, she whispered. But my soul will never be yours. What do I care for your soul, replied the fiend. I have other fish to fry. With which face rejoined her, he put out a hand and... Not to see the brow, Rosemary? I'm not Rosemary. He is. Steed followed her gesture. Behind the desk, leaning back with closed eyes, was a tall, elegant man. His hands were crossed. On one of his fingers was a diamond ring. The motif was entwined heart. As a girl, hard, harsh rubbing was always good enough for my bathtub. So what changed? What changed? Surgeons have changed. They can't take hard rubbing. They need Handy Andy care. Modern baths and all other modern surfaces need Handy Andy, liquid cleaner with active ammonia. Use Handy Andy straight from the bottle. It lifts dirt without hard rubbing or scratching. Surfaces have changed. It's time I changed to Handy Andy, too. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Ah, uh, according to Miss Planet, it, it astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.